Good afternoon, everyone. Can we have everyone seated? I hope everyone's got a seat so far. Yes, yeah, so far so good. We welcome you all today for the launch of BenQ's 4K Home Projector. I hope you all are as excited as us to share this official day of the 4K Home Cinema Projector launch. We hope you enjoy your afternoon. Uh, just to go over the agenda, so we'll be having a few uh, product presentations, followed by uh, we have two very special guests with us today in this room, and they'll be introduced very shortly. So please do hang on there to welcome them. I hope all of you all have had a chance to take some pictures and videos outside on our small photo booth that we have. Um, if you haven't, I've taken some pictures, so you'll see yourself on the Instagram stories soon. So do follow us. Please do, if you do take any videos or photographs, please do hashtag us on uh, BenQ W1700. And if you uh, and do tag us on Facebook at BenQ Middle East and Instagram at BenQ underscore N. So we look forward to some fun photographs and videos after the event, and I'll be collecting all of that. We love having the media and our partners share uh, our product uh, posts, um, our news uh, on product launches. Uh, some of you also have blog channels and we always love to follow them and we follow them very, very closely. So please do continue to share. In fact, today we have a special um, prize for our uh, media friends here and we'll be giving away three uh, prizes, uh, vouchers, I would say, um, for the best social media posts, anyone having a lot of uh, um, engagement on their posts or a lot of likes on their posts, so we'll be judging according to that. And we'll also be um, having a lot of media doing some product reviews, so in about two or three weeks, we'll be choosing the best three media and handing over the vouchers to them soon. And as for everyone else, we do have more prizes. So please, I would request you to please listen to the presentations very carefully, because we have some quizzes and uh, some contests, which Swapna always uh, manages to uh, make everyone have a good time in, the, in our launches. And uh, so please do listen to our presentations very carefully, and there'll be some quizzes at the end of it. So thank you very much for coming today. And now for the big, uh, launch. We wanted to um, do something special for um, our latest 4K home cinema projector, which is of course very affordable and we'll share more details uh, with you during the presentation. So we would like to uh, unveil our new product in the Oscar way. Thank you, W1700. Thank you, 1600 UST. And now I would like to call upon our very own superstar, our Shah Rukh Khan, Mr. Manish Bakshi, the managing director of Thank You Middle East, to do the honors to award for the best projectors.
And now to follow with our rest of the agenda, I would like to call upon our only director today, Ms. Swapna Nair, the product manager, project and head for the community. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How are all of you? Good. Great. So we, we brought you here on a Thursday afternoon. This will be a lot of very exclusive. It's not the month end. It's not the evening family time. It's not any of those that we made it on a Thursday afternoon just for all of you. Thank you so much for turning up. We, we really appreciate your presence. And uh, you might be wondering what's all this with me there. Uh, since we are talking all about film and cinema and movies, we are going to do our launch and our program today in uh, cinema and movie style. So our program is going to be offered to you in different different scenes. And the first scene for today, after the uh, wonderful launch, scene number one. I would here, I would like to present to you a very distinguished personality who's there with us today. Some of you know that on email already. I was putting a bit of a suspense on who's joining us today. Now we keep talking about cinematic colors, we keep talking about movies, how our projector is best for seeing movies. But today you're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. Means you're going to hear it from the expert who's in the movie industry, who's in the film industry, and that is none other than Ms. Reem Aluni, who's there with us today. Now, Ms. Reem is the CEO and the producer of TI22 Films. She has been in the film industry making movies for the past seven years in the UAE film industry. And she is also the CEO of UAE On Demand, which is a very popular YouTube uh, digital lifestyle channel. Now, uh, she, other than that, uh, what makes it really, really valuable for us is Miss Reem has about 20,000 followers on her social media. Wow. So we are hoping she's going to talk all about when to her 20,000 followers. So please join me in welcoming Miss Reem al the film producer, and here we start us. Exactly a hundred years later, and we're still trying to improve 
the viewing experience for our audiences. So for me, that is quite uh, quite interesting that it's still an evolving uh, evolving medium. So what does color accuracy matter? Why does it matter? Before I go into why, I thought it would be worth sharing with you uh, what some directors go through and, and why they make the decisions they make when it comes to uh, filmmaking. Uh, one of my favorite directors is David Fincher. Um, he, for those of you who may not be aware of his work, he's the director behind films like Zodiac, Seven, uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and he's won multiple awards. Um, and there's a very short video I'd like to share which just shows his use of color in his movies and why that's important. So if we can play that. Tim Burton is the opposite. If you're familiar with his films, they're very dark in nature. He likes his grays, his dark colors. And I'm sure when he's, I don't know him personally, but I'm sure that when he's directing, he's trying to get that color palette into the movie. Uh, similarly, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson, if you're familiar with his movies, he goes through a very, um, very neutral palette. He uses roses and peaches, and it's not as stark uh, as some of the other directors. One interesting, I'm missing a slide, but the one, one interesting uh, movie I did want to talk about was La La Land. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw that last year. Do people are familiar with the film? Yes. Yes, La La Land. So that won Best Movie and Best Cinematography uh, last year. And if you watch that movie, um, it actually changes the color palette throughout the movie, depending on the state of the characters. So it starts out with you know, blues and yellows and, and reds and primary colors, which are really strong as we're looking, talking about the Hollywood era. And then the minute the romance begins between the characters, the colors blend together, and it's now purples and mauves and, and more of a, a blended mesh. And by the end, 
um, you know, as they're, they're in a melancholic state, we're now in the, the greys and even greens. Um, and that's actually very, very interesting to, to watch. So every time you watch that movie, um, you know, it's just paying attention to the color and how that lends itself to the storyline is, uh, is really interesting. Um, but yeah, I've, I've touched on a few of these things already, but uh, it can be used to just change the atmosphere in a particular scene. So both Marvel and DC, they're very similar genre, it is the same genre, but uh, you know, the dark tones in DC comics give it more of that tension, whereas the light tone in, in Marvel, you've got more of that sense of victory. Um, not just the scene, but across a whole film. So films like Amelie, very red and green, you know, that gives you a sense of warmth. You actually like the characters more because it's all nice and fluffy and warm. Whereas a Fight Club is using a lot of, you know, gray tones and using the contrast between the interior and exterior. And that in itself, you know, it matches the subject matter that we're talking about. Uh, ah, I'm sorry, there's my La La Land slide. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is what I was uh, trying to explain a bit earlier that you can literally see the color change throughout uh, throughout the movie. Right, so I think we've touched on a few of the reasons, which is delivers the atmosphere and emotion exactly how the director intended it. Uh, it changes uh, the view of the scene. It's either harmony or conflict. And then it also reinforces the emotion of the actor, whether they're happy or sad. Uh, that can all be told through the use of color. Um, but now what I'm going to get into is the practical side. What does all, all that mean for the industry? So if you've worked on a film set, you would know that in order for a director to achieve the color that he wants, a lot of work goes into that, and there are a lot of people that are involved. Everything from selecting the right locations, you know, selecting uh, you know, the styling that goes along with that in the set, you know, the wardrobe choices that, that are made, and sometimes even the makeup, you know, to make sure that it all complements each other to create a certain color. So if a director has gone through all of that effort to you know, get everything right on set, they want to make sure that when a viewer is watching it at home, it is seen exactly how they intended it. Um, so not only is there the effort that happens on set, which needs to be accurate, we then go through a color grading process. And with the color grading, that's when you can get a specific tone or a specific look across a movie. Um, so the point I want to make in relation to, to Ben Q and in relation to the projectors is in our industry we put a lot of time into getting things right on set, we put a lot of time into ensuring that the color grade in post-production is done as the way to ensure viewers experience it the way we want it, but actually how it's viewed is equally as important as how it's produced because that can really be the downfall of the, of the movie. Um, and uh, you know whether someone watches it on a large screen or on a laptop or on a mobile device, you know it can look completely different. Um, in with a lot of our projects, when we produce a film, I insist that uh, the client comes in to watch it in our studio. And the reason I do that is because I want to control their viewing experience. I want to make sure that the first time they watch it, they're watching it on a clear screen. They see it the way we wanted them to see it. And not just from a visual perspective, also audio. It's important that they hear it the way that we want them to hear it. Um, I don't want to risk sending it to them. I don't know how they're going to watch it. You know, if they watch it on, you know, their mobile, on their on, on their laptop, or worse, some older projectors are, give you a very very flat image. Um, and if I've gone up through all this work, I don't want someone coming back to me saying, you know, it didn't look right, the colors weren't right. Well, no, maybe it's how you watched it. So for me. You know, it's really important to, to control that. Um, and especially in this day and age, you know, more and more people are watching movies at home, they're watching content, uh, you know, online. It's no longer a cinema-going uh, culture that we have. Um, and a lot of original content is being produced for the likes of, of Netflix and Amazon. Um, and we're not talking about cheap films either. Uh, Netflix just recently, I think in the last month, um, released a film called Bright. Is anyone aware of it? Yeah. So Bright, I don't know if you've seen it, but they actually spent uh, over $90 million on that film. So that's the equivalent of a Hollywood budget movie. $90 million that has Will Smith in it, um, and it's a huge, you know, lots of effects. And, and I'm sure, uh, I think it was David Ayers, the name of the director, I'm sure when he directed it, he went through all the same process that he would have if it was a feature film that's being shown in the cinema screen. But in fact, it's only being, uh, it only launched on Netflix. So it's never going to have its cinema debut. 
which is making it even more important to ensure that that viewing experience at home is as cinematic as possible. Um, so I know I watch a lot of movies online. I'm assuming uh, many people in here do as well. But having said that, I'm still a movie fan at the core. Like for me, the fact that I'm even in this industry is because I love movies and I love film, and, and that's, you know, a week isn't complete in my life unless I go to the cinema. So the idea of being able to actually have that experience in my living room, you know, is, is amazing. I mean, I honestly don't think the cinema will go away completely, but still, you know, to be able to replicate it, have that, that color uh, at home, I think is, is a huge asset. So I'm really personally looking forward uh, to experimenting with, uh, with the BenQ projector and seeing, uh, from what I've seen already, the clarity of the image and the color really does um, match up to, uh, to what we aim for when we're producing a, a movie on our end. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it, and I hope that uh, I've given you a few uh, tips or a little bit of understanding of how color can impact your viewing experience and the process that we go through to make sure that what we produce uh, is delivered a certain way, and hopefully now with the, this projection that it can be seen in that way as well. So, thank you very much. Come on, Miss Reem definitely deserves a much better applause than that. Did any of you know any of the stuff that she shared right now? Put your hands up, let's be honest. Did you know all that she spoke about, all the enlightenment that she did for us right now? Yes? No, right? No. no. I didn't. Being in the industry, I didn't know. Okay, how many of you out here are parents? Parents? Okay. Um, do you feel that your children never listen to you, but they listen to people from outside? Yes? Or how many of you have a boss? Yes? Okay, so I'm not looking at Mr. Manish over here, but we all have a boss, right? And how many of you feel your boss never listens to you when you tell them, but they listen to it when somebody else tells them? Yes? Right or wrong? Right. And that's exactly what I felt when I heard Ms. Reeves talking. We have been hearing Rashmi, me, and the whole BenQ team and our partners. Cinematic colors, the way directors wanted, blah, blah, blah. We've been hearing it for the past two years, three years before that. But I never understood it in the sense which Ms. Reed just explained to me. So it was beautiful. It was very, very enlightening. And coming from an industry expert as you, uh, we are really fortunate to have you here this morning. Thank you, Ms. Reed. And uh, I'm sure 20,000 followers doesn't do justice to you. You need probably 100,000 plus followers. You really know your stuff, and it's very, very fortunate to have an industry expert like you over here. So that was Ms. Reem for you. We all got enlightened on cinematic colors, why it is so important for projection technology. And so the next time when we tell you about Bentley cinematic colors, I'm sure you will appreciate it a lot better. Now, going on to our next scene. That's scene number two. Now here, we have um, a very, very eminent personality as far as we are concerned. Ben Q team members are concerned. And why is that? And Ms. Rashmi, uh, our marketing head, uh, just announced uh, Mr. Manish Bakshi as our, our own Shah Rukh Khan. Who knows Shah Rukh Khan here? Everybody does, yes? Okay, so why do we call that? Because there's one word which comes into our minds when we talk about Mr. Manish Bakshi. Uh, you all know him as managing director of Ben Q Middle East. Uh, and he's been managing the show for the past almost 20 years, 15, 17 years in Ben Q brand. I personally know him for about from 1996, 97 onwards. We were colleagues, he's my boss now, friends as well. And one word which comes to me and which definitely deserves why we call him a Shah Rukh Khan is the word hero. Okay, now why do I say hero? H standing for the most hardworking person on this planet. <laughs> the way he works for Ben Q and uh, it's unbelievable. E, the kind of energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. I'm like, we are forever asking, how do you get excited about everything so much? But he's forever excited about everything that comes to Ben Q. And R, a perfect role model in terms of a leader for all of us. When the whole of the industry was, was uh, facing challenges and all of that in 2017, Ben Q did 30% plus growth. So that was very commendable. We, for the very first time in projector business, quarter two, quarter three became the number one projector in the entire Middle East region. So that is very commendable as well, only because of the role model leadership that Mr. Manish shows us in this region, and we all follow it. 
and uh, O, uh, I feel he should be related to, his, uh, to Sheikh Muhammad probably because O stands for outstanding. He has to be the biggest, the largest, the best in everything. That definitely ties us out as a venture team member. So please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Manish Bakshi to explain you more about I work only for money. <laughs> so I'm hardworking because I need more money. Energetic, enthusiasm. If you work in the morning, you need something in the night time. And then role models, I, I'm not sure. The last one, no, not at all to be compared with the shape of this country. So thank you for having uh, us over here and thank you for being here with us. So as uh, uh, Madam Reem has already shared about the cinematic color, so I'll just market that for BenQ, the one uh, concept which he tried to explain. Uh, my presentation is uh, very easy to understand. Uh, it's based on few points only, that uh, whenever you want to uh, buy a video projector for your home, or whenever you want to have a cinematic kind of uh, experience in your home, there are only few points which comes into your mind or which probably you will feel to have it for buying any of those uh, hardware and software. Uh, one is the color, which Madam explained very nicely, which is probably a cinematic color, which is a trademark of BenQ. So color is one, but cinematic color as such, oh, the combination of two words has been a trademark of BenQ. So one is that, because what you see is that what you will believe it. And second is the audio because you want the atmosphere in such a way that the audio is very good. Third is that you will never like to have any kind of inconvenience. So ease of uh, comfortability installation uh, in your home, uh, of course the uh, projector forms a part of a total solution. You won't be having only the projector, but you will be having an audio system, you will be having a, a wireless uh, or a cabling system, then all the truncates. So, or maybe the screens over there in your home and also the seats where our partner recliners is there who provides one of the best seats in the world for the cinema experience. So this is another one. Then more to that uh, because uh, lots of competition also here but major challenge which comes in is the durability, reliability and the longer lasting way that the products are available. So these are few of the factors I'm sure you people will always be considering whenever you go to buy any of a, a cinema, a whole ambience you want to create in your home. So taking into that, we have one of the finest product, uh, which is the W series. Uh, w series was created by our company way back in 2008. And uh, this is a very, uh, 2001. So this is a very special uh, uh, series which was done by a headquarter and our r and department. Uh, no one has been able to copy it. And the core of this W series, which has been so popular across the world, globally, and also in the Middle East and Africa region, and uh, also in Turkey, is one simple concept, which is the color accuracy. So what we have done is that the uh, R&D with the Texas Instrument, who provides us the DMD chip, have collaborated with each other, and they came up with the color wheel, which is having two times sRGB. And that what provides the best solar color. And with the time we have progressed. So we started in 2001, it has been a long journey. And now in 2018, uh, we come up with one of the most finest. And for the first time, when few use this word, which probably we don't use anytime, but this time we have no, no concerns to use it, is a affordable, very cost effective 4K projector. So, all the guests who are here today afternoon, uh, you should be able to be uh, very glad to learn that whatever I go through is not only the specs which are there in the projector, but it's most affordable. So what we are trying to do as a company wise at the global level and also in the Middle East in Turkey, which helps you and us, because at the end of the day you have come for creating your business, your markets, your profits, and the same way we want to do it. That's the ultimate goal for all of us. So this particular model breaks the barrier of the price. And 
again I repeat, we have never been a company who has such kind of a pride or a proud feeling. But over here, launching this model, we want to shed away that kind of a, a, like a statement which I am saying. This particular model will be available including VAT, 5999 to the end user. Till today, you name any brand, you name Sony, Epson, or any of the competitors, they are much more ahead, probably in the five digits now, which is more than 10,000 dollars. So this will be the first time that we break the barrier of 10,000 dirham, and not only break, but bring it down 40% cheaper than that. So this is the way that we want to market it. So again, I'm repeating before I start the presentation, I won't take much time on the presentation because this is the core which I want to share. Is that this is the first 4K projector with an HDR 3D capability and you name anything which you want for a 4K, all very deeply in detailed way ingrained in all the specs, but with a very nice price value. Four, five years back, we were again the first company in the world who break the barrier for 1080p. It was again a FIFA year, so four years back. So it was in 2040 that when we had a FIFA, that time we broke a barrier of 1080p with our model W1070. And now the same after four years when we have a FIFA in Russia this year, we again come up with a very nice model which is W1700. So these are the major uh, points for this particular model. And this is the ultimate or the goal that we are assembled here, which is like launching a 4K HDR 3D model with a price barrier, which is 40% lower than 10,000 dirham. It's exactly 1,699, including that, or, or excluding that, excluding that. So it's like, in, in, the, in the dirham value, it's 5,999 as an end user price. So if that makes you feel very happy, confident for future, then probably I just go through the few specs, which are not uh, uh, much more in the in the technical way. It's very simple. Most of the specs or most of the slides will share more about the color. So uh, as you know that we are number one worldwide DSP projector brand, and also we are worldwide 1080p uh, number one brand across the world. So if you happens to see this, this particular uh, uh, statistics is for the last three and a half year, so which is like 42 months. So we are selling approximately 100k projectors a month globally. So that is the strength of PenQ right now. And coming down to the 1080p, it's around 17,000 units. If you, it's a very simple mathematics. If you divide 683k by 42, you get around 17k. So 17k of 1080p projectors have been sold by BenQ on a very consistent manner each month. But today our meeting or networking is to break this barrier towards the 4k side. Uh, it's easy to understand these are the, some of the slides which I have shown many times that 90% of the uh, digital cinemas across the world uses a DLP chip while IMAX is all 100%. All the IMAX theaters across the world uses a DLP chip. So that is where the DLP chip has got so much of a dominance compared to the LCD technology. So this is what I shared, that we had uh, started the WCs uh, in 2008, uh, so not 2001, 2008. That time we had a W20,000 uh, model number. And with the span of last uh, 10 years, we reached today where we have two big models of 4K, W11000H and W1700, where this particular model comes as a price value. So this is a whole long journey for the last 10 years of W series that we started in 2008 to achieve this kind of a feat as of now. <coughs> These are some of the awards for 4K. Uh, so what happened is maybe the launch as of today but we have already been giving this particular model for up here across the world. So these are some of the uh, uh, awards we have won across the world in Thailand, Australia, Indonesia, Vietnam. Then going further, we have also won in uh, some of European 
countries like Germany, in China, and also we are proud to share that we have a red dot design. And you can see the, the way it has been created. Red dot design is purely done on the ID basis. And this was given by the, uh, by the red dot design team in uh, winter 2017. So very, very uh, like around uh, four months back. Uh, this slide may also help you how to uh, manage your businesses and how to give you a confidence that where all the industry will go through. So if you compare 2016 and 2017, all the regions of the world have a growth between 43% to 375% for OK. So either you believe us today afternoon or not, but this is going to happen in the industry. Most of the 1080p, most of the normal monitors, which are, sorry, projector 720p, will be shifting towards 4K. And as the companies will keep on having a more price barriers broken, it will become more affordable and there will be a more and more revenue and the sales coming through that. So if you come see the comparison between 2016 and 17, we are in Asia Pacific, which is the, the purple one. So you can see it was very small in 2016, while it will be having a little bit of a growth, which is around 123%. Those say it's 123%, but I think it can be a bigger one. So this is the statistics between 2016 and 2017. So imagine in 2018, from the first month in January, when we have such a price barrier affordable model, we can have a tremendous growth, maybe more than a thousand more. And my next slide shares why it can be. So this has been the major concern for 4K acceptance, is the affordability. So if you observe, uh, till 2016, only 15% of the whole world projector market was between $1,500 to $3,000. While in 2017, it crossed the barrier and it was around 34%. But again, I can say, that in this 34% also, there wasn't a single uh, company who was driving it below 2000. 2018, because we as a company breaks this barrier, I probably feel this will become a 50% uh, share in the overall 4K projector channel. Uh, again, I can repeat, this is 2016 and this is 2017. These colors are the price barriers or the price ranges. So this one is the one which was between 1500 to 3000. That was having only a share of 15% in overall 4K. And this grew to 34% in 2017. But because we are in 2018 and we have a very nice model to be offered, we feel that in the coming year, or sorry, coming months in this year, this will be taking around 50%. And I'll share it to you why. Uh, this is the first model only, W1700, which we have as a price barrier. We will have another two models by second half, which probably may bring it down more than $1,500 also. So with all these models, which we launched in 2018, we feel the industry will really, really bounce up. Okay, so some of the slides which uh, probably rationalize the, the, all the uh, words or the statements which I'm sharing. Uh, that we know that 4K streaming is becoming very popular. Netflix, Madam already spoke to you. That's adding 600 hours of 4K contents. Amazon is like having uh, around 175 hours of UHD plus HDR programming. Disney Hollywood also getting big in this. So this is how we call it as the era of 4K, which is approaching coming. So we should be the people uh, like you and us who should do take the first advantage of this. So it's in the innovation way. So we all know the product life cycle. It's uh, very, very embryonic right now, and it will have a good path to go to the growth level. So if in this path, which probably may be for the next two to three years, if we are the companies and you as our partners can manage and can take a good advantage of it, we will have a very good future. So, uh, as Madam already explained, we are not only the DLP brand which is into the cinema, but also we have a very nice cinematic color. This is our trademark which I shared. 
And this is how we always go through that our color performance is very professional, very original, vivid, and you can take all the adjectives which you can for identifying with the color as a whole. We have it in our projectors. So in the, in the last uh, few months, we have also started sharing long-lasting cinematic color. Remember when I started my, my, my presentation, I shared five or six things. And in that last point I had mentioned was the durability, reliability, and longer lasting. Uh, it's no fun that you buy a projector as of now, but there is a color decay after two to three years. Then your whole worth of money is a waste because you will not be able to have a nice uh, visuals on the screen. So the total ambience which you have created by putting thousands of dollars will be a waste. So this is very important, two words, which is long lasting. And that is where W1700 and the whole W series of BenQ is having so much of an importance. My name, many industry people are coming with such kind of uh, technologies now. While BenQ started this series as W series long way back, 10 years back. So that was the way our R&D and our board of directors at the headquarter level has such a nice and uh, futuristic vision. And that is where we have this dominance of the long lasting cinematic. So that's what Madam also shared, that enjoy the cinematic color that directors want. It's not that what even the viewers want to see, but even the directors liking is like that. So this is uh, probably she explained that we have DCIP3, REC709, and SRGB, which are associated with the cinematic color. And that is what promised by Bill. Uh, 4K is, uh, our 4K models are very, very real 4K. There are models available by the different brands who just make a manipulation of the chips alignment to create as 4K. But BenQ uh, perceives and also controls and also says in a strong statement that we have a DLP 4K single chip used in our 4K projector. Uh, this is how the E-chip enhancement 4K looks like, while our is a single chip looks like much better. Uh, this is how the alignment of the uh, misalignment looks like for the projectors where you use few chips to make it 4K, while BenQ we use a single chip as I shared, so there is no alignment issue. <coughs> Further, we also use uh, optimized 4K images because we use the lenses in two different ways. We group the lenses and then we also use a very low coating dispersion lens so that the light doesn't get emitted, it goes straight, and that creates a better color. So these are the things which have gone into the manufacturing of this particular model, and across the whole W series. So you can see the difference between the BenQ projectors and others, as per the accurate color and the image integrity is concerned. And uh, then, uh, some of the models where we have one of the models today, W11000H, and previously we had one more model and we are still continuing, X12000, also use a THX certification. Then, as I mentioned that our W1700 has three major properties, one is the 4K, another is HDR, third is 3D. So these are some of the images while using HDR. HDR is a very uh, uh, is a technology which is being used in the cameras for many, many years. So it means high dynamic range. It, it again related with the color. So it makes the color more detailed, uh, very nice toning. You can have a vivid and very smart way to put the visuals on the screen. Uh, these are some of the advantages when you're using HDR. You have an accurate color temperature. You have a better skin tone. Uh, if you are using an HDR, then you can have in-depth details of the color if you are using a HDR technology, which is integrated in our BenQ W1700. <coughs> so, two models which we have today, though this is a, a W1700 is a more of a, of a hero model as of today, but otherwise if we also have another model W11000H, X stands for HDR. So this is 4K again using HDR, cinematic color, 
EHX certification, and then we have two more, uh, one more certification and the Zoom. YW1700, it's a 4K, a single chip, projector optimized HDR, which I shared with you, cinematic color, and also we are using, as I shared initially, that you need good audio also, so this, this has got a speaker integrated, which is Cinema Master Audio 2. Uh, yeah, one one more very good point about this projector. This is very lightweight. Generally, you have seen the video, the the cinema projectors used at home, very bulky. Those are 10 plus kilogram. This may be the first time we even break that barrier by bringing up by bringing a projector which is 4.2 kilogram. So it's very lightweight, very very lightweight. I haven't seen any kind of a video projector available in the market with 4K, with 4.2 kilogram. So that adds my fourth feature which I initiated my, my presentation is the ease of uh, installation and also ease of convenience to buy and to take to your phone. So all these points put together or combined together, I hope you will like our 4K HDR W1700 and you will help us a lot to promote in the in UA market and also across the Gulf region. Thank you for listening. So all of you understood why we are launching such a incredible model this this afternoon. Yes, what's so special all about it? Uh, in price, in specs, in many different ways. Yes. So uh, I do recommend and I do um, uh, request all of you that after the presentation is over, please take a live demo. Uh, the one on the left is the W11000H, which we have relaunched with HDR and 3D. You can put on the 3D glasses, switch on the button, you can see the depth of 3D details in that. And on the right side is the W1700, the one which is being launched for 5 triple line films. And please ask for a demo with and without HDR, you can see the difference. For example, if it's rust color, it will be yellowish, brownish, but with HDR it will be the right red color. So you can really see the difference with and without HDR. Take this opportunity to understand this technology so you will be able to explain better to your partners, to your customers. And that's why we have made sure that we, we demonstrate just that for you today. And uh, also one of the very important points mentioned was the THX. Now THX, how many of you out here are Star Wars fans? We have a Star Wars movie running there. Any Star Wars fans here? Okay, there's about three, four of them. They're the diehard fans of Star Wars. Star Wars was uh, from uh, the George Lucas, the gentleman who made the Star Wars uh, brand. It's his company, Lucas Films. They came out with this certification called the THX certification, which our W11000 has. That's one of the only one model in our entire range of about 70 models which has the certification. It took our company 18 months to get the certification. It took us 500 tests, 200 data points, about 18 months, $400,000 to get that certification. And that THS can only be understood by people like Ms. Reem and who are in this industry. They will come asking for THS because THX means, and why did Mr. Lucas do that, George Lucas? He was making these fabulous movies for Star Wars, colors, sounds, and all of that, right? And what was happening is all the fabulous is making in the studio, but by the time the people saw it, not good quality, not good audio, not good video. So what he did is he sent out his audio engineer and made sure that from the time it's made in the studio, all the way down to when the end user, the customer sees it in the theater. Every single process is controlled in order to give the exact colors, sound, audio, video, which the directors intended to the consumers. And that is what THS certification is all about. And our W11000 has that. So we're very proud to have our uh, you know, the range out there. As of now, we have four models, four 4K models, starting from 5,000 lumens to 2,200 lumens. So 4K is growing big time. And um, now to take you a little bit more up, like I said, it's always easy when we, as part of BenQ, talks about it. But we would like you today to listen from people who are not part of BenQ team, who are not part of the internal BenQ team. But yes, they are very, very good friends of BenQ, all right. And uh, that takes me to our next theme, which is um, scene number three. And here, I'd like you to be introduced to a very fine young gentleman. And uh, this young gentleman is a tech enthusiast. He's been writing about technology for the past 10 years. He's an independent uh, tech enthusiast. He loves cinema. He, he loves making uh, uh, documentaries. 
He loves getting lost in nature, making cinemas, making films. He's also an avid gamer. And we've had the good fortune of having him here with us today. He used to work for a company called Absolute Geeks. And Absolute Geeks used to test out our machines for us. And right now, he's been appointed as the editor of PC Magazine, one of the most respected IT technology magazines in the world, in, in uh, the UAE and Middle East. And uh, who I'm talking about is none other than Mr. Kevin Sebastian. Let's put our hands together and hear from him. for you today. Uh, can you hear me without the mic? No. no. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, you need the camera for the mic. Right. Awesome. Okay. Um, so basically, I'm here on behalf of the Becky team. They've actually asked me to come on stage and talk about EW1700. So I've had the project of, for, I mean, I guess about 24 hours, I have the thing to review. And I can actually tell you, in terms of a bokeh projector in its class, and I've spoken to a lot of journalists as well in the same room as uh, Nick and Victor and everyone here on, on people who are reviewing this projector, we can say that BenQ have actually made a first class product. It is, in fact, uh, one of the most lightweight projectors I've used. I also like to game a lot, and I think that uh, finally getting a projector which I can put into my main living room and game on consoles, that's something that's really unique about it. I don't think I have to worry about investing in a 4K TV over time. So the biggest thing is, uh, one thing that I really appreciated about this, and a lot of people don't uh, discuss this a lot, but projectors, at least the ones I've encountered, don't seem to have great sound. It's always a need to link up a projector with an audio system. This is not the case with this one. And I have to say the audio is absolutely phenomenal. And I hope you can see, even in fact, once you look behind, I'm really, I'm assuming that HDR is enabled onto that projector right now. The HDR, once you calibrate it, you will truly begin to enjoy cinema. And I really think that uh, you guys really, it's one of those things you need to see to believe. And uh, that's about it. It's a very short and sweet, no presentation. You guys have to see it for yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now you know the one thing about the dress change. In case any one of you uh, noticed that I've had a dress change. Because we are in the world of cinema and movies and glamour and fun, yes? What did the rest go up? Okay, do See my shining jacket now? Okay. So, this takes us to the last scene of today afternoon. Thank you so much for your patience all this while. This is the last scene waiting between right now and lunch. We have a lovely lunch arranged for you. And no more speeches. Scene number four, okay? Now, scene number four is very different. Not like the, any of the scenes that we've had so far. Why? Because all this while we've been talking, you've been very patient, you've been listening to us, you've been very kind, uh, you've been trying to keep your eyes open, yes? So thank you so much for your patience all this while. Now we want to reward you. And how do we do that is with scene number four. Because here, we are going to make you the star. Okay? Now how are we going to make you the star? For that we need some volunteers. So I need about three teams of five people each. <laughs> come on. Three teams of five people each. Just grab your friends and come along here. It's a very quick... Fun. Come on. How, how often do you get this opportunity to happen? Thank you, Viju. Thank you so much. Let's have a big round of applause for Mr. Viju, the first person, brave person to come on. I need three teams of five people each. Don't worry. I guarantee you, you're going to have a lot of fun. But it's for what? You will know the suspense. That's why I don't want to talk about it first. Oh, there you go. Yes, lovely. There's a lovely lady coming up for us. Thank you. We need 15 people here, we're going to divide them into three teams. For what? So how many people have here? Okay. So can you divide yourself into teams please? Five people each? This is random. Five people each. Five already? Okay, another team. We need a few more please. Come on ladies and gentlemen. Bring out the child. Four more. Bring out the child in you. Have some fun today. Two more. Two more. One more. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Now do we have our three teams? Five each? That's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One more, please. One more gentle lady or gentle man. Yes, there you go. Please come along. No, no. Thank you so much. So we have our three teams here today. And how are we going to make you the star? About turn. Please see. <laughs> 
we are going to allow you to make your own film and also star in it today. Okay, so we are going to make your TV ad. So there's five, three teams, five people each, yes. We are going to give you 10 minutes to think about this. You can, we are going to, uh, what would I say, excuse you from 10 minutes of boring speeches anymore over here. You can go out, brainstorm and then come back. And there's a bit of a rules here by the way. We are going to award something really nice to the winning team. So there will be only just one winning team. And what are the criteria? Let's look at that. There's some rules. You have to basically make a TV ad for the W1700. That is what the contest is all about. Okay, make a TV ad for the W1700. You heard so much from Ms. Reem, from Kevin, from Mr. Manish. I've been blabbing about it all this while. Who, who unfortunately gets stuck with you to the product demo, I've, I've blabbered enough there as well. So, what are the rules? Only one minute TV ad. So you just have to make a one minute TV ad. One condition is you have to have the W1700 with you in that, okay, when you do the TV ad. And your entire team of five people should participate. So not just one actor, all five actors, actresses. And you're going to be given 10 minutes brainstorming. And how are we going to judge the best team out of these three teams? We have some judging criteria. Our first team, eh, first judging criteria is when you see the ad, okay, so now all of us are going to be the judging criteria, okay, so we're going to clap the loudest for the best team around here. Will the customer feel like buying the W1700 after seeing the ad? Does it talk about the 1700 benefits? And most importantly, there we're trying to have some fun, the overall creativity and the use of humor. So I'm going to excuse all 15 of you. You can go out for 10 minutes while we are going to do something else over here and have some fun as well. Okay? Only two criteria. One minute and you have to use the W1700. Make your own TV ad. Come back here. You're going to make your own film and you're going to be the star in it. So 10 minutes will be back for you. Thank you. So let's have a big round of applause for the Now so see, these days you need a lot of creativity and innovation to survive in the market, right? So we're just giving you a chance for that. Okay, so while they are brainstorming for their 10 minutes, let's do something. We won't keep you bored. We're going to have a Q&A for what we'll be talking about all this while. And after that, we're going to try and have you all put on your thinking caps for some quiz prizes, for which I will invite Mr. Manish Bakshi back on stage. So please come along. So Q&A, any questions about what you've seen so far? Anything which you like to understand more about the BenQ company on the budget side or or W series or maybe on the W seventeen hundred? Any other questions? Yeah, please. Uh, so Manish, you didn't explain about this your channel part as a category at the reset there for system integrate or how you want to push in the market okay. like that. For this one. So all of this kind of projects. Okay. What so, is this your category? Okay, so it's very simple. We run the operations uh, similar to any other company in a very, very simple way. So we as a vendor have got an office here, which we try to make the branding and the marketing like the way we are doing today afternoon. And then we have our distributor. So in, in this case, in this country, we have AB Vision, uh, who buys directly from us. And then they have various different segments, which is like retailer or EC and uh, home, home cinema AV dealers, home automation AV dealers, and probably they have also you know, IT dealers. So this model, pro, we feel like that it can go to various segments, and these segments then sells to the end user. So one thing we will be very heartily and strongly controlling it is the end user price on this. We will not allow by any segment to break that. Uh, already we have broken the prices, so I don't feel like that there should be a more price barrier over there. So this is a very simple channel structure which we run in every country, and we will run for this one. Yeah, there is any references in the main to the website that is a categorized and you explain? Uh, yeah, we have a distributor list there in our in our uh, website, and, and we also have the information and the same system. Yeah, so we have names uh, listed on the resellers and also on the SI side. So yes, we have on the website. Well, as I said, it's a very simple channel structure, which probably every company has. So nothing so uh, like uh, uh, different or innovative or great about this channel structure. It's a simple one. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. 
uh, a guy over there had mentioned that he can use this projector as a console. Yeah. A gaming console. So what are the outputs that we can connect the gaming console with those with this projector? Okay. So you have an idea? Basically, it has HDMI connection. Okay. Uh, that's what it has. And most of the gaming console these days are coming out with 4K capability as well. Okay. And that's why we kind of recommend that it can be used for gaming. And uh, very importantly, in our gaming projectors, what happens is the input lag is much lesser. So, you know, obviously when you're shooting on screen, it's happening at the same time with the help of your projector. So, uh, BenQ is actually also the number one gaming monitors in the world. So, one of the biggest reasons that happens is because of the input lag. Very, very quick response time when you're shooting or you're killing or you're driving or whatever you're doing in your game, it comes real time on your screen. It could be connected through HDMI. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And most of them nowadays is coming with dual HDMI. And uh, as we go along, like I said, about we have about 70 odd models. So depending on your requirement, you can pick and choose going from personal portable, meeting rooms, conference rooms, education, pro AD, auditorium, laser, personal home cinema, gaming, movies, you name it, we have it, literally speaking. And there is so many different connectivities available for all of them. I'm talking about particular this model. Yes. Yes, through HDMI. Yes, more than gaming, we, we in our technology are using the word immersive. So, which can be used for the gaming and also on watching the movies. So, the gentleman did use the word gaming, which is a one para of that. But in our technology way, in our company, we use more of a word immersive. So, which probably what happens is make you deep in details or deep involvement with the, with the uh, visuals which you are watching on this. Any more questions on this from this side? Uh, no. So then let me ask you some questions. <laughs> okay. So I have two questions for which we have some. Yes, of course. We have nice gift vouchers here. So two. So I have very nice two gift vouchers. So we start creating some profits to you today afternoon itself. So my first question is. That we have two different models which we are launching today. So can anyone tell tell me that uh, what are the real uh, brand name we have created for those two models? One is W eleven thousand H, another is uh, W seventeen hundred. No. Okay, I, maybe I'm not very clear in my question. I want the specific technological words separately. We have used. For W11000H and W1700. Yeah, please. DLP 4K HDR. No. Come on, you were sleeping when I was presenting. <laughs> the category of the name. In home cinema, we have three categories. I again repeat. W11000H falls under one category of the name which BenQ has created. W1700 falls into the second category which name again BenQ has created. So what are these two different names BenQ has created globally for the cinematic 4K HDR projector? These already I have shared. So these are not the category. This is the general nomenclature for all the 4K projectors. So I want the category names. So Cine Pro is for the W11000H and Cine Home is for W1700. I will also try to explain you the difference. Cine Pro means cinematic professional and Cine Home means for the home users. So that is the way we have categorized both. Please, sir. Thank you. What's your name? Victor. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. <laughs> oh, I gave a lot of hints. Okay. So I also shared HDR, which is very easy. Uh, uh, like uh, process right now and I also had uh, shared with you that this particular technology has been used in the cameras for so many years. So can anyone tell me four best qualities of HDR which BenQ uses it? Should be tough? HDR don't give long lasting I want four specs related with the HDR which BenQ uses it. Project optimized. Like optimized projector? Uh, cinematic color? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, light and compact? No. This you are sharing about the 4K projector specs. I want the 4 specs within 
SDR technology which are being used by the children. Is it too tall? Maybe three. Okay. It's a high dynamic range. It has a contrast ratio, brightness, sharpness, all combination of that it will give you a best picture quality. If it is a dark scene or the light scene, okay. it will give you clear and accurate pixel gradation. So okay. That's called SDR. Okay, so basically it's quite right, but the best of the specs are like color mapping, color temperature, then I have shown the skin tone, and then also I shared one thing which I also emphasized. Detailing of the colors. These are some of the features which PMQ HDR provides in their projector. So, please. Fahad Patel from Sharaf Deji. I'm a technical trainer. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, again for listening. Also, there are some deep details for every space, which probably makes us uh, so so loud and uh, clear for the industry. So, whatever maybe some of the questions were a little bit different or difficult maybe, but I'll urge that you please go back and a little bit learn about this because I'm going to tell you that within 2018 and 2019. Most of the technologies and the projectors sold in the market from 1080p or 720p will jump to 4K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our teams got so enthusiastic that before you could call them, they came running back. They, were always, they just can't wait to be the star. So we already have our first team ready with us. And they're all just going to take one, one minute each, and you're all free to go for lunch. Okay, so let's. Give, uh, give them our absolute best attention and let's have fun along with them and I'm going to bring out their creative best over here. So let's have, uh, uh, does this team number one have any name? Like 20th Century Fox, you know, production film movie names. Okay, so let's, let's invite team number one on stage. Please, a big round of applause for them. Hi, good afternoon. Good evening, friends. Uh, today is a weekend, and uh, we are going to depict one typical scenario in a household in UAE. A family uh, is wanting to go for a movie, and uh, the scene follows the family's waiting. Somebody's going to get the ticket, somebody's going to find something else, and uh, here the goes the next scene. Uh, I'm not watching movie. Have you got the ticket? No, I'm trying to book the ticket. Let's see. They're trying to find the, the new release movie, Padmavati. They're trying all possible means to get the tickets. <laughs> no luck, online booking. Our friend there goes to the cinema, also doesn't get a ticket. Oh, it's a very sad scenario. But I want to watch movie. What's the problem? What's the problem? I want to watch movie and the ticket are Why do you like to watch a movie? We we'll have something else here. What <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's just perfect spot on what we want for our projector. Thank you, team. A big round of applause for them. Come on. Okay, so now can you 
can we have team number two on stage, please? Team number two. Okay. And Ms. Rashmi will just tell you when to start or what minute. You are, you are aware of the rules? Yes. I have DCD, the party is about to start. Why don't you come over? Hey. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Hey. Hey. Hi guys, uh, we have to plan a party for at least uh, 50 people. So let's uh, plan something very exciting. So let's uh, plan a dinner, a good dinner, one uh, movie going out. Or we can do. What do you oh, think? Good. excellent. I have an old projector at home. What do you think? Shall we start the movie on that? No way! I got an excellent projector gifted by Manish Bakshi. Four <laughs> K <laughs> projector. Shopping vouchers for the winning team. 
For cinema. This yeah. is for cinema. Yeah, just bring in chairs. Okay. Jessica, Pradeep, Munazir, come on. Everybody in the room. Steven, you're the tallest guy in the room. Please, can you go back? I hope I can see Yes. Two more seats here, please. Anyone, please? Yes. And can you move here, please? One more, please. One more. Okay, guys, excuse me. This forward, please. Forward. Perfect. Make sure you see the lens. All right, everyone, smile. Hey, smile. <laughs> Why oh, it's too quiet? Join them, please. No, 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 you shouldn't be there. Yeah. Uh, all right, give me a thumbs up, everyone. Okay, how about a cheer for the video? One, two, three, go. I need louder. One, two, three, go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 